It was summertime on the island of Sodal. Gordon pulled the passenger express. It was very busy. But Gordon loved the hustle and bustle. Henry all trucks in the forest. He loved the peace and quiet, but he didn't see many people. Sometimes working in the forest could be very lonely. Later, Henry pulled into Nanford Station. He was delighted to see all the passengers. But Gordon was not delighted to see Henry. Keep your smelly phrase away from my passengers, grumbled Gordon. But it's only logs, chuffed Henry. Passengers and freight do not mix, huffed Gordon. And he wished away. Henry watched the express leave the station. I'd like to pull passengers sighed Henry, just for a change. Henry stopped at the water tank on the edge of the forest. Children were standing by one of the trees. What are those children doing? Henry asked Thomas. That's the old Sodor wishing tree, said Thomas. They must be making a wish. A wishing tree? gasped Henry. How wonderful! Do you think it would make my wish come true? asked Henry. It might, said Thomas, and he puffed away. Henry rolled up to the wishing tree. He took a deep breath and made a wish as hard as he could. I wish I could pull the express instead of Gordon he said. That evening, the Fat Controller came to see Henry. Tomorrow, you will pull the express, he said. Thank you, sir, said Henry happily. His wish had come true. The next morning, Henry chuffed cheerfully into Knapford Station. When his passengers were on board, Henry blew his whistle and pulled out of the station. But Henry puffed too quickly. Go gently, called his driver. You can bump freight, but you can't bump passengers. Sorry, puffed Henry. Henry puffed proudly through the countryside. Pulling passengers is a grand job, he said. Gordon was in the repair yard. He was being fitted with a new boiler. But Gordon felt lonely. He was missing his passengers. The passengers were missing Gordon too. They were having the bounciest, bumpiest ride they had ever had. When Henry got back to the sheds, the Fat Controller was waiting for him. There have been complaints, he said sternly. Passengers are not like logs. You must be gentle. Yes, sir, said Henry sadly. Being gentle was very difficult. Then Henry saw Gordon. He was looking miserable. My wish has made Gordon go to the repair yard gasped Henry. This made Henry feel very bad. The next day, Henry had to collect the buffet car. He tried his best to be gentle. But he shunted the buffet car so hard, everything flew into the air. There were more complaints than ever. Henry didn't want to pull passengers anymore. He wanted to wish everything back to normal.
But when he arrived at the forest, Henry couldn't remember which tree was the wishing tree. Oh, no! cried Henry. Which one could it be? Henry didn't know. So he decided to wish on all the trees. I wish I could pull phrase again, he puffed. Then he moved to the next tree and he wished again. I wish I could pull freight again. The Fat Controller arrived on board Thomas. What are you doing, Henry? asked the Fat Controller. You are causing confusion and delay. Henry told him all about the wishing tree. Wishing trees don't run railways, said the Fat Controller. That's my job. Gordon just needed some repairs. He'll be back tomorrow. Henry was delighted. The next day, Gordon came back to work. He looked as good as new. The passengers were so pleased to see him, they cheered and cheered and cheered. Gordon beamed happily for the rest of the day. Henry was happy to be back in the peace and quiet of the forest. At the end of the day, he stopped near the wishing tree. And even though the Fat Controller had told him trees don't run railways, Henry wished he would never have to pull passengers ever, ever again, just in case. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. It was a baking hot summer on the island of Sodor. The sun was shining brightly. James and Toby were taking the children to the seaside. It was a wonderful job. All the engines liked seeing the children's happy faces, and they loved hearing them cheer when they saw the sea. Thomas wished he was taking the children to the seaside, but Thomas was taking a big tank of raspberry syrup to the ice cream factory. Down on the beach, it was very hot, and the ice cream lady had run out of ice cream. So when Thomas arrived at the ice cream factory, the factory manager was waiting for him. We have to make lots more ice cream, he cried. You must go and get the cream, the chocolate and the strawberries. Thomas was disappointed. He had lots to collect and he wanted to take the children to the seaside. If we get everything in time, said Thomas's driver, we can still take some children. So Thomas rushed to the dairy. He collected the cream and he puffed quickly away. Next, Thomas had to collect some strawberries. So he raced through the countryside to Farmer McCall's. Then Thomas had to stop for James. Out of the way, snorted James. Passenger train coming through. James's carriages were full of laughing children. They were going to the seaside. Why does James get to take the children, moaned Thomas. At last, the crossing was clear and Thomas puffed away. If I'm quick, I can still take some of the children, he puffed. So Thomas raced as fast as he could. Soon, Thomas arrived at Farmer McCall's. 
Please, be quick, Thomas panted. The farm workers loaded his trucks. Before long, they were filled with plump, ripe strawberries. Thank you, Thomas chuffed, and he raced away. Next, he had to go to the chocolate factory. Thomas hurried through the baking sun. I've still got time to take some children to the seaside, he panted. Thomas puffed faster and faster. His wheels clattered and his pistons pumped. But he puffed so fast, the signalman didn't change the points in time. Thomas raced down the wrong track. Bother, cried Thomas. Thomas had to reverse slowly and carefully back to the point. Then he had to wait while Toby went past. Toby was taking more children to the seaside. They were having a wonderful time. Everyone gets to take the children except me, moaned Thomas. At last, the signalman changed the points. Thomas reversed back onto the track. And soon, he was on his way once again. When Thomas arrived at the chocolate factory, it was very late. Hurry up! cried Thomas. If I'm quick, I might still get to take some children. The workmen loaded Thomas's trucks as fast as they could. They were soon filled with heaps of chocolatey cocoa powder. Thomas was ready to go. But the shunters hadn't released the brakes on the trucks. Thomas pulled as hard as he could, but the trucks wouldn't move. I have to hurry, puffed Thomas. He he. He huffed and he puffed, and at last, the coupling broke. Thomas shot forward, cocoa powder flew everywhere. Now I'll never get to take the children, puffed Thomas. After a long time, Thomas's trucks were ready. The yard manager had released the brakes and Thomas chuffed carefully out of the yard. Finally, the track turned left past the old church. Thomas arrived at the ice cream factory. He thought his job was nearly done, but he was wrong. The factory manager was waiting for him. The ice cream will soon be ready, he said. You must take it to the seaside for me. Thomas was very disappointed. He wished he could take the children to the seaside instead. He wanted to hear them cheer when they saw the sea. Thomas puffed along the coast to the seaside. I wish I was taking the children, sighed Thomas. Percy was waiting at the seaside station, and so were lots of children. They all cheered as Thomas pulled into the station. Thomas was surprised. Why are all the children cheering? puffed Thomas. They're cheering for you, laughed Percy. They've been waiting for the ice cream. The children were delighted to see Thomas and delighted to eat the ice cream. Thomas loved seeing the children laugh and cheer. The fat controller was waiting with the children. Today, you have worked extra hard, said the fat controller. You are a really useful engine. Delivering ice cream is a fun job after all, puffed Thomas. He was very happy. All the fat controller's engines like to look clean, bright and shiny. They love being washed down and having their brass polished until it gleams. James was in the workshop being repainted. He was beside himself with joy. James thought being repainted meant he was special. 
the workmen painted and polished for hour upon hour. Then with new paint shining, brass twinkling and blacking black, James returned to Tidmouth's sheds. Aren't I a beautiful red? He asked the others. No wonder the fat controller thinks I'm special. But Percy was worried. He wasn't being repainted, and he wasn't red. Does this mean the fat controller doesn't think I'm special? He asked. Looking splendid is not the same as being really useful, said Thomas firmly. But best of all is being really useful and looking splendid like me, said James cheerfully. Before Thomas could say anything else, James closed his eyes and fell happily asleep. The next morning, all the engines were very busy. Percy was working at the coal plant. Thomas and Emily were taking passengers up and down the branch lines. Gordon was pulling the express. The fat controller came to see James. He told him to join Percy at the coal plant at once. The coal trucks must reach Brendam docks before the boat sails, so no dilly-dallying, he said. Yes, sir, said James, and he set off at once. But James didn't go straight to the coal plant. He decided to go by the canal instead. Then he could see himself in the water for yard after yard after yard. Magnificent, he puffed. James had forgotten what the fat controller had said. At the coal yard, Percy was working as hard as he could, but he was falling behind. The line of trucks was getting longer and longer and the yard manager was getting crosser and crosser. Where could James be? James was still enjoying himself, but there was no one around to share his fun, so he headed for Wellsworth Station. But as James pulled into Wellsworth Station, Gordon and the Express were pulling out. The passengers had gone. Bother, said James. He was disappointed and he left the station. James headed straight for the branch lines. James saw Thomas. Look at me, he puffed. Don't I look fine? You should be at work, called Thomas. But James didn't listen to Thomas. James was enjoying being James. Percy wasn't enjoying being Percy. He was trying his hardest, but the trucks were being very naughty. Poor Percy was almost worn out. What will happen to the order now? cried the yard manager. When James rolled into the coal mines, it was late in the afternoon. Percy was cross. So was the yard manager. To make up for lost time, he said, you must take an extra long line of trucks to the docks. James was delighted. The docks were always bustling with engines and people. It's the place to be seen, he said. The trucks are being very naughty, warned Percy. But James wasn't listening. James puffed along, looking forward to being seen. But the trucks were naughtier than ever. They rocked and rolled and crashed and bashed. James's face was soon covered in soot. Going downhill, the trucks wiggled and giggled. James had to put his brakes on with a jolt. Coal tumbled out of the trucks, landing on James. 
James was cross and Biff the trucks as hard as he could. More coal flew out. Now James didn't want to be seen. He was as dirty as he had ever been. But on his way to the docks, he kept passing his friends. He passed Emily. And Edward. And Thomas. Thomas thought the only red thing left on James was his face. James trundled into Brendam Docks. He hoped no one would see him. But Gordon was at the docks with the express. He could not believe his eyes. He thought James was the grubbiest, grimiest, dustiest, dirtiest engine he had ever seen. Percy arrived safely with the last of the trucks. I like your new coat of paint, he puffed cheekily. You do look splendid. James knew he should have listened. He didn't feel splendid anymore. But for the first time all day, James could hear clearly. He could hear the sound of the trucks giggling at him. And despite feeling foolish, even James had to smile. It was a busy, bustling day on the island of Sodor. All over the island, steam engines and diesel engines were happily working together. The Fat Controller came to see Thomas. The quarry has an important order to fill, said the Fat Controller. I need an engine that is both useful and reliable. I won't let you down, sir, whistled Thomas proudly. But when Thomas arrived at the quarry, he had a nasty surprise. Oh, it's you, oil diesel. What are you doing here? I'm here to help Mavis, puffed Thomas proudly. Steamies can't help, not like a diesel, he sniffed. That's not true, said Thomas crossly, and he began working at once. But Diesel was soon up to his old tricks. First, he shunted Thomas under the hopper. Cinders and ashes, spluttered Thomas. Then, when Thomas let off steam, Diesel sniffed loudly. What's that horrible smell, he cried. Oh, it's just a stinky old steam engine. How rude, exclaimed Thomas. No wonder the fat controller is thinking of scrapping steamies. I don't believe you, huffed Thomas. But he was upset. That night, Thomas stayed at the quarry, but he couldn't sleep. What if Diesel is right? Thomas said sadly. What if the Fat Controller scraps all of us? Thomas was worried. The next day, Salty had arrived. Ahoy there, me eyes. Fresh Diesel from the mainland. After he had been refueled, Diesel's engine started to rev faster and faster. Aha, he chuckled. This new fuel makes my axles tingle. Coal doesn't make my axles tingle, sighed Thomas. I wish I could have fresh fuel. Even Mavis was excited by the new fuel. Oh my, she said. Thomas was feeling left out. Soon Diesel was showing off. I'm the fastest engine in the world, he boasted. Look at me go! Suddenly, Diesel's engine coughed. Then it started to splutter. Black, smelly smoke billowed from his exhaust. I feel sick, wailed Diesel. Mavis started billowing smoke too. So do I, she groaned. The quarry manager was upset. 
It's the new fuel, he cried. Water must have leaked into the tanks. Soon, all the other diesels had broken down. Harry, Bert, even Salty had ground to a halt. So the fact controller telephoned the quarry manager. And the quarry manager came to see Thomas. You are to collect fresh diesel from the fuel depot. Right away, sir, whistled Thomas. And he steamed out of the quarry as fast as he could. At last he arrived at the fuel depot. Give me all the clean fuel you've got, Thomas cried. This is an emergency. We'll soon have you loaded, said the workman. Thomas was soon loaded with trucks carrying fuel drums. The fuel drums were very heavy. Thomas pushed with all his might, his pistons creaked and his wheels squeaked. And he kept on puffing. Thomas trundled all over the island with fresh fuel for everybody. For Salty, for Harry, and for Bert. Thomas was feeling very tired, but he still had one more delivery to make. At the quarry, all work had stopped. Diesel was as green as a leaf. Mavis was feeling very glum. Then they heard a wonderful noise. It was Thomas. He steamed into the quarry with one final puff. I made it, he cried. Mavis and Diesel had all the bad fuel drained out of their engines and all the good clean fuel poured in. Marvellous, sighed Diesel. Thank you, Thomas, purred Mavis. Soon the quarry was clattering with the sound of work. And finally, the important job was done. The fat controller arrived on board Percy. Well done, Thomas, boomed the fat controller. You have saved the day. You are a really useful engine and a credit to the railway. Thank you, sir, puffed Thomas proudly. And even Diesel had to admit that Thomas is a very special engine. Even if he is a steamy. It was a beautiful autumn day on the island of Sodor. All the engines were working very hard. The fat controller came to Tidmouth Sheds. He had exciting news. Gordon is to take the new mayor of Sodor on a special tour of the island, he announced. Gordon was thrilled, but then he had a thought. Who will take the express, sir, he asked. The other engines were excited. Pulling the express was an important job. Everyone wanted to be chosen, but the fat controller chose Emily. When the fat controller left, Emily was very happy, but Gordon wasn't impressed. The express is the longest passenger train on the island, he sniffed. I always cross the island twice by tea time. You'll never do that. I've got big wheels and I'll do my best, said Emily. Big wheels don't make a big engine, boasted Gordon. Everyone knows I'm the best. Thomas thought Gordon was showing off. Twice before tea time, he puffed. That will be hard. But Emily wasn't listening to Thomas. 
I'm going to be as good as Gordon, she said eagerly, and she steamed away as fast as she could. Emily puffed into Knapford Station. She was looking forward to taking the express, but it was very, very heavy. Bus, my buffers, she gasped as she slowly pulled out of the station, but she pulled away too soon and left the brake coach behind. Emily puffed with all her might. She was determined to be fast. Emily crossed the island once in good time. I am as good as Gordon, she puffed proudly. Emily had to wait for Edward at the crossing. Edward went as fast as he could, but it wasn't fast enough for Emily. Hurry up, slow coach, she cried, or you will make me late. Edward felt sad, but Emily just steamed on. Emily stopped in Maithwaite Station. The express was a guaranteed connection with Bertie the bus, but Bertie hadn't arrived. He'd had a flat tire and was running late. Emily tried to wait. She counted to ten twice but she felt as if her boiler would burst. I'm going to be the slowest engine on Sodor, she cried, and it's not my fault. And she puffed away. When Bertie arrived, Emily had already left. Emily needed to take on water, but James was at the water tower. He was pulling the slow goods train. Emily wanted to go first. It doesn't matter if you are late, she said. You must wait your turn, said James crossly. Express trains don't wait, said Emily. And she left without taking on water. Emily went faster than ever. Her carriages rocked and rolled and her passengers were biffed and bumped and bounced. Finally, Emily could see Brendam Docks up ahead. Twice before tea time, she puffed happily, I am as good as Gordon. Then there was trouble. Emily slowed down. What's happening to me, she cried. She went slower and slower. Emily had run out of water. She huffed and puffed, but she had no steam left. Finally, Emily came to a complete stop. The Fat Controller arrived on board James. He was very cross. You should have waited, said the Fat Controller, and now you have caused confusion and delay. You left the brake coach, stranded Bertie's passengers and bumped your carriages. You must learn to be more patient. Emily knew the Fat Controller was right. She felt very bad. She was only trying to be as good as Gordon. I'm sorry, sir, she said sadly. James pulled Emily into the docks. Then he went back to collect the express. Now I need an engine to take the slow goods train, said the Fat Controller. Emily had an idea. May I take it, sir, she said, if I promise to go slowly? The Fat Controller thought it was a grand idea. The slow goods train needs lots of patience, he said. Emily was pleased. She was determined to do a good job. So after she took on water and lots of coal, Emily buffered up to the slow goods train.
She stopped at all the right stations. And she let all the other engines go first. She stopped at a signal. Thomas was waiting there. I am learning patience, Emily puffed. But if only I could learn it faster, she cried. Thomas had to laugh. 